Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to the Frostbite's Gaming Experience, part number 11 of the Pokemon Emerald Walkthrough. First off, we got ourselves, we're switching out some bikes. We don't really need the mock bike anymore for some time, but the acro bike can come in handy a little bit later on, so we decided to make the switch up right now. Now that I think about it, I probably should have actually started, well, for one thing, I'd have to own Omega Ruby or Alpha, Alpha Sapphire. I should have started off this episode by having me play that version and then being like, oh, sorry, I'm playing the, I'm playing my Instagram version of Gen 3. Let's go ahead and go back and then showcase what actual Gen 3 looks like. Anyways, getting away from popular memes at the moment. So in today's part, uh, not too much going on again. We are going to be in a bit of a lull for the next couple of parts. We're starting to hit that stride where after you defeat a couple gyms, you got a number of routes you got to go through and a couple towns that you go through where, you know, not a whole lot of gym battles happen or really anything else too much goes on. It's more about just going from point A to point B. And you know, we got a couple parts where we had to deal with that for a bit, but then it starts really ramping up a while afterwards. And, you know, for the time being, we're still just going with our two best of Combuskin and Sableye. No real reason to add anyone else to the mix because just about everyone else I want to add to the mix won't be able to add on for quite some time anyway. So, hey, what can you do? Um, you know, just kind of going with what we got for the time being. But we do find ourselves right now going through routes 111 and a bit of route 12 at at the same time so you know that's kind of what we're that's pretty much all the entire part's going to be we're going to get against a whole bunch of trainers and a select few trainers after this battle anyways i have a little bit of story to it but beside the story there's really not much else going on with it so take a look at route number 111 we don't really have a whole lot to look at for the moment because there's a good majority of these pokemon we can't actually go and face off against just yet. There's actually an item that we need because Route 111 is split off into three separate sections. You have the north section, the south section, and in the middle you have the desert section basically. However, the desert section has an issue with a whole bunch of sandstorms going on. And until you get goggles to combat the sandstorm, you have no means of entering it, and that's really where all the Pokemon of Route 111 are located at. However, there are still a few that you can go out of your way and fish and surf for, and surprisingly enough, we do have a little bit of a difference, as you can see the one pond over there, where you can go ahead and fish for something or surf for it once you do get fit. Uh, surf, I should say. <laughs> In surfing in the Emerald version, you have a 1% chance to get a Goldeen with a 1% chance in the Ruby and Sapphire version to get a Sunskirt. And then a 99% chance you'll get yourself a Meryl. And then while fishing, you have a 30% chance for a Goldeen and a 70% chance for a Magikarp with the Old Rod. Good Rod, 20% chance for a Goldeen with a 60% chance for a Magikarp and a 20% chance for a Barboach. And then a 100% chance for a Barboach in, with the Super Rod. And then again, the others we will go into once we actually are capable of going into the desert level itself. Right now, however, we are going against the special, like, little special event of trainers that we can go against. We actually agree to take on this whole entire family. You take on the family all in one sitting, so make sure that you are prepared for it because you cannot do any kind of switches or anything. You gotta beat all four of them in succession. Not too hard when you, you know, really look at it, especially with how high of a level we already are, because we only have two Pokemon for the time being, as, you know, it's going to be relatively easy for us. We're almost double in levels of what we are going against, okay? But you go against the family, start off with the father, then you beat the mother, then you go against one of their kids, and then you actually then go against um, one of the grandparents, and by beating them, you get yourself a free Macho Brace that you can utilize if you so choose. But then it gives you a little bit of backstory with it. Oh, hey, you know, you're... I doubt you'd lose to our brother. And then, you know, the big question then becomes, well, who is the brother? And you actually don't find that out till much, much later in the game who the brother is. To the point where, like, unless you're playing it completely straight on through, there's a good chance that you would forget all about this family. And, you know, if he, he'll, like, make a comment about it. I, I don't know if, like, the dialogue with him changes based on if you beat his family or not. I haven't dived that much into figuring it out because I just really don't care at the end of the day. I just want to fight whatever it is I can fight to get stronger. To beat the Elite Four, that's what real Pokemon's all about. It's not about finishing the Pokedex. Well, for some of you it might be, but for a man like me, mm -mm, no. It's all about beating that Elite Four and beating every other trainer in the dirt to show them that you are the one that they should fear the most, you know, or, or, you know, go against Watson and have a 50% chance to win and a 50% chance to lose. 
You know, I mean, it all, it all depends on how you view things, you know? That's just how it goes. Um, but yeah, I don't know exactly if, you know, the trainer we go um, later on, if he makes a mention to it. He probably does, but unless you completely remember going against this family, it'll just probably come off a little bit strange when you go against him. And then when you take a look into it, it's like, oh, now it makes complete sense. Or you can do what I did as a kid where, hey, I don't see where the kid is. I wonder where he's at. You look it up online, you find out where he's at, and it's like, oh, okay, that's really about it. doesn't really do much beyond that. I swear to God, every single Meditite that I have ever gone against only uses the move Detect. I swear, it's like they don't have any other move to use except for that. I don't think I've ever seen a Meditite in this walkthrough use anything other than a Detect. Even the one I'm going against right now, all it does is use Detect again and again and again. It's like, you have Psychic moves, I am part fighting, you could take advantage of that. Instead, you just keep trying to make sure that you don't get hit. Anyways, once you defeat all four members, you can go and chat with all of them. Majority of them mostly just say, hey, you know, our son or my brother or my grandson will, you know, he's so strong, he'll take you out. But you talk to the mom and she'll give you the macho brace and then you can read right here, you know, who's stronger than who. Big brother is stronger than grandma, which to me doesn't really mean much because all you had was a metatite that could only use detect. Didn't really do much of anything. One thing I did forget to bring up, though, as far as stat relates go, is that you do have yourself a chance during a rock smash to run into a Geodude. The Geodude can be anywhere from levels 5 all the way through level 20. I don't know what the percentage chance of using the Rock Smash will result in going against a Geodude, but I do know in this particular area when you do use Rock Smash, if you do run into a Pokemon, it is a 100% chance that it is going to be a Geodude. Come up, go against some camera people. Very, I don't know, a little bit interesting when going against the news reporter and the cameraman because then afterwards it's like, oh, would you like to do an interview? And uh, the interview is just basically pick a word and call it good. And I'm not exactly sure what that does within the elements of the game itself, really. Because I've never, I've never looked close enough to actually care, in my opinion. You know, it's kind of like one of those things where it's like, yeah, maybe it does something. But does it do something that's really going to affect me personally in playing this game? Chances are, it's probably not, and therefore, I don't really care about it. So, instead, what we get here is me just kind of filing through some stuff and just picking whatever stood out to me. And, you know, you, you can decline the interview if you want, but I, again, I kind of just wanted to showcase it because why not? Um, and it's like, okay, like, how would you describe this? Alright, well, let's look up trainer, and then egg. And there we go. I feel that our battle was egg. And no matter what you say, they're going to be like, Oh, that's that's so deep. It has so much meaning into it. I got I got shivers going down my spine. You thought, you thought that our battle was egg? <gasps> Amazing. My God, you are you a are sure egg growl and poe with the, these words you use. And just the way you sew them all together just makes so much sense in the world. But... It, 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 it's it's egg you know I stated that you know egg is how I felt our battle went and again I I don't personally know exactly what it does and personally I don't really give a damn on what it does because to me it does nothing it, it's not like if I make a certain answer suddenly my Pokemon will instantly reach level 100. It, I don't actually you know now I think about it. Maybe there's some weird spaghetti code glitch that actually does that. If you pick a certain word or a combination of words, maybe then your Pokemon will immediately hit level 100 and you just insta-win the game. You know, I've seen crazier things done in speedruns, my goodness. But aside from that, I, I have no idea what you get out of doing that. I know that in some areas you can make up like a certain phrase and what it does is that it, it uh, changes um, a particular Pokemon and six particular areas which you can catch said Pokemon 
I'm not going to say the name of the Pokemon because that Pokemon, that said Pokemon is going to be part of said team and I don't want to give away what said Pokemon is, but I'm pretty sure I already gave away what said Pokemon was a long time ago. So it doesn't really matter as much, but hey, you know, you try and keep it in suspense. Oh, what's he going to get? Is he going to get Lapras again? Oh, he sure loves his Lapras. Even though I don't think, yeah, technically, did I use Lapras in, I did not, I don't think. No, I think I did. So I did, oh my goodness, but I didn't, I don't think I used, did I use Lapras in my Gen 2? Now that I think about it, uh, I don't remember. Huh. You know, if I did, then that would mean that I did use Lapras in Gens 1 and 2. So maybe I should go my way and use Lapras in Gen 3. I just don't know how to get a Lapras in Gen 3 now that I think about it. Hmm. Other than obviously getting it in, you know, uh, Fire Red Leaf Green and trading it over. But I mean, actually getting in this particular area? Not exactly sure. Anyways, we have been on route number 112, as you can see with the tall grass there. And again, it, the tall grass is set for route 112. That's why I didn't have any stats for it in route number 111. But there really isn't much to go when it comes to route 12. If you're playing the Ruby and Sapphire version, you have a 25% chance you can catch yourself a Machop. With the 25% in the Emerald version, you can catch a Meryl. And then all three versions, a 75% chance you can get yourself a Numel. And that's really it. There's not really a whole lot of variance when it comes to this particular area, which again, for me personally, makes it a little bit hard to get my team rolling because especially when it comes to these videos, I like having a wide variety. You know, I kind of like, I'll make an exception having like a water type and then like a water ice type just so I can get more of the ice stab effectiveness of the part ice type whenever I can. But I try to like be well-rounded with it, you know, try and have different types of different moves so I can have good coverage to beat the game, all that kind of stuff. But when it comes to Gen 3, if you've noticed the pattern in a lot of the previous episodes, when it comes to the water type Pokemon, it doesn't really change. It's either a Goldeen or a Magikarp or maybe a Wingle if you're lucky and that's really about it. You come to an area like one Route 112 and you've only got a Machop, a Meryl and a Numel to get. Well, Machop and Numel are already null and void for me because I've already got a fire type and a fighting type. Now, the Numel, I can't remember what the name of it, of what it evolves into, but I believe it is a fire ground type. And it's like, okay, that's fantastic, but I could also get this other ground type that also has another type that I don't have and then get two extra stabs on top of that. So why would I go my way to get this? And that's kind of one of the things when it comes to getting yourself a Torchic in the beginning is that, you know, Torchic really is well-rounded with being a fire and a fighting type that you don't really need to go out of your way and get some of the early fighting types, or in this case, a fire type with the new Mel early. You know, you're pretty much already set. And Sableye is one of the more interesting ones to get. Again, I wanted to get him because he's part dark, part ghost. So he has a lot of immunities and really isn't weak to anything. You know, he resists He resists a lot. He's immune to a lot. Well, he's, he's resist to, I think, one type. But he's also immune to, like, three types, which is insanely good. And then he doesn't have any weaknesses. So there's really nothing to take advantage of when it comes to a Sableye. That's why I went on my way to get him. And because I just think he looks awesome. But then again, for me, every other Pokemon that I am looking to get, I have to wait till a certain part in the game to finally be free to get them on my team. And sometimes that could end up taking a while. So because of that, here I am, you know, we're in part 11. I'm already three badges in, but I've only really utilized two Pokemon in my entire team. I think by now in some of my other runs, I would have already had my third Pokemon by now, if not my fourth Pokemon. But because of how undiverse the Pokemon selection can be, and again, a lot of it is also preference too. I could have already gotten myself an electric type, but there's a certain electric type that I do want, so I do have to wait till later. That much is on me. But even then, it's like, okay, you only have one really, well, I guess two electric types. Well, three, I guess, if you really think about it. But to me, two of them are rather uninteresting you know Pulse and Minon I just don't care for those two there's nothing about them that I really see now I'm gonna end up wasting a lot of people's time here because I'm trying to get a double battle out of these two I'm a little afraid that the guy's gonna look over to the left but after waiting a while I was like you know what I might as well just give myself a berry and then try and reset and what's really funny is that I make an accidental I accidentally I did not mean to take two steps forward I only meant to take one step forward and then I wanted to take a step down and wait for like a good timing. So the fact that I actually did get the double battle is 100% luck. 
you know, because I did not mean to take that ste second step going forward. And I was upset when it happened because I was like, oh, crap. Now I got to go with two individual battles, which, you know, isn't bad. But I still want Sableye to get a little bit of experience whenever he can. And I feel that double battles are going to go faster than two individual solo battles, especially when both trainers have two Pokemon. It just makes it, it makes it a little bit faster for me to do it in a double battle. But again, accidentally completely messed it up there, but uh, got lucky. So, you know, I'll take that. You know, I'll take the little bit of luck that I can get every now and then. And right now we went through the fiery tunnel. There really wasn't much to say in the fiery tunnel. Um, I do believe a, in fact, I forgot to actually give myself the stats for it. So give me a quick second here because yeah, I, uh, I completely blank that we actually do go through the fiery path entirely. And I forgot to give myself the stats for it. So in the fiery path, in all three versions, you have a 15% chance to get yourself a Machop. In the Ruby and Emerald version, you have a 2% chance to get a Grimer with a 25% chance in the Sapphire version. And in the Ruby Emerald version, you have a 25% chance to get a Coughing with a 2% chance in the Sapphire version. In all three versions, you have a 10% chance to run into a Slugma, 30% chance for a Numel, and an 8%, 18% chance for a Torkoal. There we go. Mostly more fire types, some extra fighting types, and you start getting a little bit of look at, okay, you can add some poison types. The thing is, poison types, even in Gen 3, exactly still aren't exactly the, the strongest Pokemon to add to your team. I feel that the generation where poison types actually became a little bit more viable was more Gen 4, and even more so Gen 5, but Gen 4 started adding a, a good amount of poison type moves that really help out with the beefiness of poison types in the first place. But Gen 3, I feel like they're still a little bit too weak to utilize on your team. You know, I'd, I'd suggest waiting till Gen 4. So again, not really looking to add myself a Grimer or a Muck on... Uh, a Grimer or a Muck. A Grimer, a Muck, a Coughing, a Weezing. I'm not looking to add any of those onto my team because at this point, they're still not really all that strong. And I also feel that for Let's Play Walkthrough's sake, you know, I want it, I want the battles to just kind of just be done and over with, you know, so I can just get it, keep keep the ball rolling, keep a move on. Once you start adding a poison type and relying on its bulk, it's good for battles, but it makes battles take a lot longer. And therefore, it's like, oh, well, then, Will, you can generate more parts out of it. Yeah, but it gets boring. All right, you know, then then I'm sitting here and I'm having to do so many battles against every single trainer taking almost 10 minutes of battle, maybe not that long, but maybe even like two to three minutes of battle. It, it takes too long. You know, again, some poison types can be really good for competitive. I think anyways, I don't know how well most poison types have been, but again, you know, using poison type moves to like, you know, poison in its own right or like stall kind of moves and whatnot. You know, I get all that, but you know, when it comes to my whole entire strategy is to be as defensive as possible, it doesn't make for exciting gameplay in my opinion. So there's that. But with that, we will be calling it a part right there, ladies and gentlemen. So I do hope you enjoy the rest of your evenings and we will catch you all on the next part.